September's here already and with it begins the busiest time of the year for new game releases. Hi folks, today on Get Indie Gaming we're looking over the top 10 new indie games coming out this September 2019. Coming in at number 10 and out on PC in early access on September 24th, Noita is a particle physics driven platforming roguelike. It sees you play as an apprentice mage where you explore deep into sinister minds and do battle against all manner of horrors along the way. What sets this one apart from your two a penny roguelites is the art style and overall look and feel with the incredible fluid and gas physics mechanics at play here associated with the range of spells your mage is able to cast. You're also able to combine your spells with environmental elements around the map which is also fully destructible. This means there's no rail-like route for you to move from beginning to end of each level. Noita has been in development for the best part of five years and while out in early access, the creators Nola Games are saying they expect a full launch next year. Noita with its intriguing gameplay and imagery is one I'm going to buy into sooner rather than later. At number 9, River City Girls is the continuation of the River City series, although the typical roles and rescue dynamics have been reversed. Here it's the girls taking the good news to the hoodlums standing in their way of setting free their kidnapped boyfriends. In keeping with the River City playbook, it seems nearly everything you can find within the game world is yours to use as a weapon against the folks getting in your way. There's clearly an expected nod here to the previous games of the series, although the retro styled graphics whilst harking back to those on the NES are finally animated, River City Girls lands on September 5th on the PC, PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, with a physical edition planned to come out via limited run games later in the year. At number 8 and coming to the PC and iOS September 5th, Widower's Sky offers a mix of puzzle, action and platforming and tells the story of a family having crash landed on a foreign planet with the mother having died in the initial impact. You play as the father and it's up to you to look after your son and pet dog and find a way for you to return safely home. Firstly, I'm really taken with the visuals, particularly the use of the distant camera perspective. This highlights the relative smallness of our protagonists versus the wider environment. It reminds me of the technique used in Below from earlier in the year, although there's so much more going on here with the vibrancy of the landscapes and vistas compared to Below's murky dungeon environment. With these visuals together with an engaging soundtrack, Widower's Son looks already to be a wonderful immersive experience and something that's quite different to the norms. Nearly five or so years in the making, this month's number seven, Overland, is a distinctive looking turn based tactics game from Finji that comes out on September 19th with it driving onto the PC and all of this generation's consoles on the same day. I've played a number of demo builds of this over the years with the most recent being a few weeks ago at Gamescom which left me suitably impressed. Overland sees you begin with a single individual, what I've always assumed is their pet dog and a broken down car. You're tasked with navigating your way and surviving a trip across the post-apocalyptic bug infested North America from the east to the west coast, going through grasslands, over mountains and surviving great deserts. As could be expected, you'll need to manage the scarce resources as you go on your journey while collecting other survivors which adds a squad element to the game. Each game starts with a randomly generated lead character and car, with it also featuring permadeath so should you fail to make it all the way over to the west, you'll begin back again where you started. Visually this is a real triumph from the backgrounds to the characters which I found it easy to empathise with their predicament and the hard choices and sacrifices they need to make to survive. Nicely done, Finji. It's wonderful to see Overland out there in the wild.
coming in at number 6 and published by Harlem-based Iceberg Interactive, The Sojourn is a first-person puzzler that's self-evidently steeped in the concepts and stylings of such atmospheric games as Myst, Rhyme, and The Witness, and of course that's no bad thing. While the narrative unfolds as you play, The Sojourn tells a story in which you, the character, inhibit a pure and beautiful world that's under threat from a darkness and accompanying evil. In another nod to one of the all-time classics, playing this one puts me in mind of Portal, with you traversing from one objective or goal to the other, although you would be wrong to consider this a walking simulator with the puzzles being key to the overall experience. To describe much of the mechanics would deprive you of much of the mystery, so I'll only say you skirt between two parallel existences, one in the light, the other in the dark, with much of the puzzling based on the location of statues that are key to each riddle solution. With over 10 hours of playtime and four distinct areas, each with their own puzzle styles and changing rules, there's plenty here to keep puzzle fans happy for the Sojourn's duration and beyond. The Sojourn launches on September 20th on PC, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. At number 5, which of course is halfway through the countdown, we have Creature in the Well from Flight School Studio. It's best described in terms of being a top-down hack-and-slash dungeon crawler with pinball-inspired mechanics. I've always loved playing pinball and the concept of mixing this up with dungeon crawling elements feels inspired. The story has you play as Bot C, the last of a group of robot workers with you restoring power to the rooms you play by doing battle with pinball based puzzles featuring all the usual pinball artifacts and more besides. Along the way you collect currency enabling you to open more and more doors with some of the more difficult and reflex challenging puzzles giving you access to secret routes which offer new weapons and upgrades to your character's abilities. While yes it's hard there's much to love about it and it looks so very pretty with the soundtrack and effects perfectly fitting the environment. When you think of family, what comes to mind first? A story of hope? Of love, of despair. Of how fathers pave paths for their young ones. At number four and just missing a place on the podium, Children of Morta drops September 3rd. You might remember this game was announced all the way back in 2014 and successfully kick-started late the year after with it bringing in just over a hundred thousand US dollars. Having spent time with it at various events over the last year and the limited pre-release demo, I'm happy and excited to finally get to grips with this in a few days after the video airs. Children of Morta is a roguelite action game featuring a family called the Bergsons. They've served as guardians of a sacred and mythical Mont Morta for many generations. As for the gameplay, you have primary and secondary attacks, while also being able to use dodging and defense movements. Each family member is best thought of being a different character class, and you're also able to customize and upgrade individuals and the whole family at the same time. While we've seen many of these type of games before, I'm a big, big fan of the pixel art at play here together with the audio work which feels perfectly in keeping with the overall world we have to play in. Children of Morta launches in a few days time this coming September 4th. At number 3 and given it's only coming out this month in early access, a choice that might prove controversial, here we have Atomic Crops. Described by many as a Stardew Valley game but with guns, it's a farming sim with rogue elements where you combine growing and looking after plants and crops while also spending time blasting away hordes of mutated creatures. The backstory to all this comes by way of you being the last farmer in a wasteland post end of days event where the rabbits and slugs and snails are now all super powered so you better believe you're going to need to be somewhat handy with a variety of weapons. I got to play this recently at EGX Resd in London and while I found the gameplay tough, having spoken with the team looking after the booth and getting some instructions for things I should be looking out for, this became one of the hits of the show. While it merges playstyles that are so familiar, the farming sim and the shooter, 
It's a mashup of something so dissimilar that it really shouldn't work, and yet it really, really does. The upgrade mechanics are finely paced, and the ability to call in and recruit other farmyard pals to automate the farming is a nice and really cute touch. And as the devs say themselves, this one is something pretty nifty to anyone prepared to shoot first and harvest vegetables later. Guilt, repentance, mourning and every pain of the soul of all kind were visibly and tangibly manifested everywhere and in all of us. At number two, and yet another game successfully funded by way of a Kickstarter campaign from 2017, while the team had a goal of a crisp 50,000 US dollars, the campaign ended having brought in just over 333,000. This made it one of the most successful Kickstarter campaigns versus initial aims over the past couple of years. With Blasphemous, there's no denying, to my eye at least, the artistry at work here within the pixel art and the accompanying soundtrack. Yes, it's also hyper-grisly and ultra-violent, and certainly uses themes and motifs some people will find in somewhat delightful understatement a little bit over the top. As for the gameplay, well, you play as the Penitent One, and you're caught within a cycle of death and rebirth, with the combat focusing on delivering devastating combos and execution-style killings against enemies and bosses. As can be expected, you're able to find and use upgrades known as relics, rosemary beads and prayers, which harness the power of the heavens to boost your powers and aid you in breaking your eternal damnation. Blasphemous comes out September 10th on PC and all of this generation's consoles. And at this month's number one and out on the 20th, Untitled Goose Game from House House has been a firm favourite at the numerous trade and public gaming events for the past couple of years. Here you play as the titular Goose in what's really a cute looking stealth game with slapstick elements, having been let loose within what seems to be a sleepy British village setting. With a sandbox backdrop and multiple areas with differing challenges, whereby you're really out to annoy as many villagers as possible, I just love how cheeky and light-hearted all of this looks, and if that honking noise and strutting waddle doesn't cause you to grin, then honestly, what's wrong with you? Untitled Goose Game will launch onto the PC and the Nintendo Switch. And there we go, that's just about a wrap for my top indie games coming out this September. Be sure to press that like button and subscribe while hitting the notification bell so not to miss out on all things indie gaming. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all back here soon for another video.